Hey everybody, what's going on? It's me, John D. Villarreal. Welcome to another John D. Villarreal radio show here on 1210 AM Miami. The man, the only station where you are the man. So much going on, so much going on this week and this weekend. And I mean, I thought to myself, John, how do I want to start this show? And Because there's so much to talk about. But I was checking out the sports news over the weekend. And that's just breaking news over this weekend of Andrew Luck, the QB, the superstar QB, really, of the Indianapolis Colts, retiring. And I really had to start with that because of the reaction. One, it's big news, and it's something that we want to talk about. But what really struck me as a former athlete myself, and I'll get into that in a little bit, was the reaction of the some, some, I mean, I want to preface that by saying it was the reaction of some of the Colts fans, but when Andrew, you know, when the, the, the booing ensued with that announcement, in my opinion, that was pretty shocking, really shocking. I mean, there was just tremendous, tremendous booing going on. Uh, get in, in my opinion, given given that situation, and you just have to ask yourself, like, what is that about? Why would they do it? I get it. I get it. You're a fan, and if you're an Indianapolis fan, you're like, this is the franchise quarterback. Of course, you don't want him to retire. But to boo Andrew Luck, to boo when that news broke, was. I think very disappointing and very telling because it's like where are we at right now and and I do think that you know uh, Colts GM I believe Chris Ballard hopefully I'm getting that correct um, because there's been so much things happening here said you know hey and, and then I'm paraphrasing that Andrew Luck this quarterback has given so much to this town so much to this team like, what's going on? What are you doing? It, it, that's my major paraphrase. Obviously, you know, probably a lot more corporate professional than that and everything like that. But, but that was like, wow. I mean, how do you, how do, you do that as a, as a fan of that team? And let me, let me just say this. The NFL, well, I'll, 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 okay, I'll start with this. I used to be a national champion powerlifter. I won multiple national championships. And for a good portion of my life, I also took third at the world championships. And for a good portion of my life, I was a national world-class athlete. And I was also very, very good at, at wrestling and very, very good at judo. And, 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 and I had done other sports as well. I had done a lot of other sports. But those probably were my three Bass, or at least the ones that I, you know, uh, judo I just dabbled in a little bit, but just happened to be good because of the wrestling and, and you know, but wrestling and, and powerlifting I put a lot of time into and, and yielded some, I'd like to say, some, some decent success, particularly in powerlifting. That's the one where I really, you know, uh, you know, really went after from, from high school on. And it's the kind of thing where I, I've worked with a number of professional athletes. I know, you know I had worked with, with some professional football players. I had worked with a, with a number of professional uh, uh, baseball players. And, um, and I'm not going to name names right now or get into that. That's not the point. But the point is this. I understand training. I understand the wear and tear that goes on with with your body the physical abuse that you have to put on the one hand you're building especially a, a sport like football and I can't even I won't even pretend to think that I understand uh, what happens on a professional football level in terms of that kind of stuff right and how many of us really do I know I've talked to and like I said work with you know, many uh, uh, professional, uh, sorry, well, yeah, uh, professional athletes, including uh, professional football players, and, and I'm telling you right now, that is a grueling sport in terms of what it does to you. 
And as a quarterback, you sit back there in that pocket, hoping that your line is going to protect you, hoping that you're not going to get hit, hoping that you're going to be successful in that play. But as you go back to throw, you are, you are in a very vulnerable position from attack with defensive players that are big, fast, strong, and looking to dislodge that ball from your hands. And, you know, most of us will never experience it. It's fine to be a fan and say, hey, you know what, I want to, you know, I want to root for this team and I really wanted my team to win. And I really wanted the Colts to do well this year. I get that. But you need to get this. You know, I'm getting, uh, you know, I'm not a kid anymore, right? I have a family, got a little daughter, she's young, you know, got a great wife. And someone said to me, one of my coworkers, and it was an interesting comment, because now I live with, it's like the old saying, right? I retired, but my injuries didn't. I mean, when I was younger, <laughs> I don't want to get too much into it because it's just, I could detail so many stories. But I will just say, when I was a, when I was a young kid, and Andrew Luck is, a, what, 29, right? When I, I'm, I'm well past that age, well past that age. When I was younger, I remember going to the gym, hitting a squat, you know, and it was you know, a big level, you know, a lot of numbers. I mean, I, I also had a saying that I've probably squatted over 700 pounds more times than most people have squatted. So, I mean, I, you know, I would do just insane numbers insane numbers and particularly at the gym in in training and uh i remember injuring myself i was up in uh ithaca new york because like about half my family went to cornell and i was there before my sister's wedding and i think i, I was I, I think i was like 18 years old or something like that and i remember i was at the cornell gym and i was lifting something like i want to say it was I can't remember exactly, I want to say it's like 575, 585, something like that, like about six plates, tweak my back, pretty bad. And I like, oh man, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, it's hard to breathe and everything like that, it's, it's, it's a bad deal. And I went home and you know, I did the whole thing, my mom's like, what are you doing, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, I came back the next week, the next leg workout, and I had a PR. Well, you can do that when you're young, right? Maybe, and, and you're committed and everything like that. But I gotta tell you now that I'm older, I get hurt, I'm hurt for weeks, if not months. And you know, I have a lot of different injuries and different things like that. And it's, it's a weird thing because on, the, on, on some days, I feel amazing. And if people look at me like, wow, you know, I can't believe you know, my age and everything like that. And I, I feel like I do all kinds of things because of the athletic base that I set down. I don't train anywhere near what I used to, but I'm starting to try to get back into it again. Because you go through periods of, even if you have no injuries, where I've done it for so long that it's almost, it's a, it's a, it's a second, third you know, job all wrapped up into one and you just need a break every once in a while, right? Because you never, if you're at that elite level, you almost never get that level of break. It's not like before, when I was growing up where there were, you know, quote unquote seasons. Now, top athletes train year round every single year. And so it's a big deal, right? So, you know, now, but then, so any given day I feel great. You know, look pretty good, you know, I can do a lot of stuff. In the gym I can still do a lot of stuff. But then on any other given day, my wife's like, what, what happened to you? It's like I got hit by a truck. And you know, hard to walk around, hard to move around. You know, this hurts, that hurts, this pops, that pops. And because I've, you know, put a lot of miles on my body. Now, given what I've done, I'd like to think I'm pretty healthy and I'm doing everything I can to be healthier, to take care of myself and stretch and and you know, drink water and do all that type of stuff and whatever. But I can't even imagine, I mean, I can a bit because I've been at a high level and, I, and I've talked to a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, NFL players, but the level of damage and intensity that you go through as an NFL football player, let alone a quarterback in, in terms of that stuff. When you look at someone like Tom Brady, it's like, it's just unbelievable that he's still doing what he's doing, that he just won a Super Bowl last year. But 
Just because you have a Tom Brady doesn't mean that you have to impose those standards on an Andrew Luck. And now we're seeing more and more NFL people saying, you know what, I'm re retiring early. Because there's a, you know, you know, you, that is an individual decision. You don't know what Andrew Luck feels like every day. You don't know what he goes through. You don't feel that pain of that last injury. And for the fan to sit in there and just boo, you know, the, this, this, this announcement, I, again, I get it. You're not happy. But you have to understand what this person has given, you know, athletically to that city and that franchise. And he has to, at 29 years old, it's great to be famous. It's great to have all that money. But what if you can't enjoy it? What happens if Andrew Luck suffers a major, major injury and, you know, you don't, you don't wish this on anyone, but, I mean, you know, you remember back, look at what happened to Joe Theismann. Look, I mean, there's all kinds of people that, that, that get, you just look over the last weekend. Look at some of these devastating injuries that happened in the uh, uh, Cowboys-Texans games. I mean, there's other games like that. I mean, everyone has to call their own shot. You know, should we boo you if you left your job and you were miserable or, or it was physically challenging to you or, or you know, you felt like you were risking your health? So I, I'm not saying I don't understand it as a fan, but you have to see the flip side of that. There are sports, I mean, the NFL, like some, some people said, you know, it stands for not for long. Now, you know, a, you know, a lot of people love football. No doubt about it. And the NFL is the number one sport in America. I totally get it. But I think you have to respect someone making a decision for their own health. And that reaction from the fans there in Indianapolis, I was very disappointed in. I don't think that was right to represent that city. I don't think that was right and reacting to that news and, 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 and what Andrew Luck has given that community. And I think that they could do better. And I hope that there are fans that step up and say that. And I'm sure that there are. You know, I'm not, you know, in touch with what's going on over there. I want to know what you think, South Florida. I want to know what you, where you weigh in on that. There's, there's so much more I could just talk about on this. There's a lot of other topics that we have today, including... Trump and China and Biden and the race and then that that you know the news that broke over you know last week weekend over the stuff that happened there in Florida and the court ruling on that we may touch on that you can call me at 786-633-5927 786-633-5927 but what what happened with Andrew Luck and how that was handled i mean the dude in his press conference was saying like this I, I can't deal with it anymore, basically, in my opinion. That's a rough deal, dude. This guy's gone through so many injuries. It's a rough, rough deal. And I think you have to understand that. I think you have to feel for that. Anyway, we're going to talk about all that and more. My name is John D. Villarreal. You'll see the John D. Villarreal Show on 1210 AM Miami. The man, the only station where you are the man.